Good morning. I'm Kenneth Moten. And I'm Janae Norman. Here are the top five things to know this Friday. Number one, tracking tropical storm Barry. The storm is already dumping heavy rain on Louisiana this morning. A hurricane warning is in effect for parts of the Gulf Coast. Forecasters say Barry could become a hurricane by the time it makes landfall later today or early tomorrow. Number two, the expected immigration raids this weekend. Federal agents are set to begin sweeping raids on thousands of migrant families on Sunday. Officials say ICE agents plan to target those with final deportation orders including families whose cases have been fast-tracked by judges. The cities on the list are Atlanta, Baltimore, Chicago, Denver, Houston, Los Angeles, Miami, New Orleans, New York, and San Francisco. On to number three now. The 2020 census will not include the question, are you a U.S. citizen? President Trump is abandoning his plans to add that question. The census is used to decide how many seats each state gets in the House of Representatives and how federal money is distributed across the country. Opponents of the question argued millions of people, mostly minorities, would decline to answer a citizenship question and go uncounted. The president now plans to sign a different order. It will call on government agencies to give citizenship figures to the Commerce Department. We head to Chicago for number four, where R. Kelly has been arrested on federal sex crime charges. Kelly was taken into custody on 13 counts of child pornography and obstruction of justice. The Grammy winner already faces state sex abuse charges in Illinois. And finally, number five, your Google Home device listening in. Google is defending its practice of letting employees listen to recordings of people who use the company's voice assistant. The company insists a small fraction of recordings are analyzed to improve voice recognition technology. Earlier this year, Amazon admitted that contractors listen to audio clips from Echo devices. Amazon also insists the practice is done to improve its technology. Hey Google, is this an invasion of privacy? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. So many people use those devices, Amazon, Google, Alexa. They do. Uh, and I know a lot of people who also will not have one in their home at all. I I won't even activate Siri on my phone because ugh, I don't need She's Siri always in my listening. business. I know. And so, I mean, obviously they say that um, it's all about helping technology or making the technology better for That's voice recognition. That's what they say. But somebody's there with popcorn <laughs> listening to your conversations. I know. They're like, ooh. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Um, yes. They're listening. Oh, so let's get right to the big story this morning. <laughs> Tropical storm Barry already lashing Louisiana's coastal communities with wind and rain. So let's take a look at the satellite. It shows the slow moving storm still churning along the Gulf Coast, strengthening ahead of its expected landfall later today or early tomorrow. So forecasters say Barry is likely to become the season's first hurricane capable of unloading more than two feet of rain before finally moving on. Our friend Trevor Alt is down in Washington, been tracking this one all morning. Good morning. Trevor. Good morning, Kenneth. Good morning, Janae. A tropical storm Barry is really taking its time. It's marching toward Louisiana at only about three miles an hour overnight, but it is packing a punch and it's expected to get even stronger before it fully makes landfall. This morning, the Gulf is bracing. With Tropical Storm Barry bearing down and threatening to become a hurricane by the weekend, thousands now scrambling to sandbag and evacuate. We we'll take three days of, of clothing because that's the routine. This area right here, we always we always got to evacuate. As much as 20 inches of rain on the way to parts of Louisiana, as the state is already battling unprecedented flooding. The Mississippi River is higher than it's ever been with a storm this size approaching and a torrent of hurricane rainfall threatening to overtop the 20 foot high levees protecting New Orleans. Just days after previous storms flooded the city streets and with many still weary from Hurricane Katrina. We're confident that we are not going to have a a duplicate of Katrina. However, if you have a storm that has elevations much higher than those flood walls, you're going to get water in the city. New Orleans mayor telling residents not to evacuate, but to have a plan. And Louisiana's governor, John Bell Edwards, taking action ahead of time, activating 3,000 National Guardsmen and deploying disaster response resources while requesting extra federal emergency funds. This is going to be a major weather event uh, for a huge portion of the state of Louisiana. On top of being a powerful storm, Barry is also slow moving, possibly bringing 48 hours of heavy rainfall beginning Friday night and not letting up until late Sunday. 
Forecasts show once Barry does make landfall, it's expected to head north, drenching Louisiana, but also hitting parts of Texas and parts of Mississippi as well. Janae, Kenneth? Yeah, we're definitely thinking about all the people on the path of the storm. Hope everyone is safe. Especially um, in those cities that have already right. been saturated. And that people yeah. are, stay dry as well. I mean, Trevor Alt, he should be outside covering this one, and, <laughs> but he is dry and inside. Right, you, yeah. yeah. Are you too good to go outside, Trevor? I'm not, I don't have the dedication of a, of a Kenneth Moten for the extreme weather <laughs> events so yet. Yeah. We want to see I you in galoshes yeah. and your yeah. raincoat. That blue ABC News jacket, how you got Blowing one. away in the wind. I, I just got that the other day. I need to. Bre I haven't taken it to the tailor yet, so it doesn't. I would have let you borrow mine. You like so to get like into my bag. office down Is in it still DC. still in your office, like the tie that I borrowed from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Trevor, thank you so much. Have a, have good, a good weekend. Have a good weekend. We appreciate hey, it, you guys too. Thank you. You're the best. Well, now to the possible nationwide roundup of illegal immigrants. President Trump's deportation rates are reportedly scheduled to begin on Sunday. Thousands of undocumented migrants are expected to be targeted, leaving migrant families on edge. The threat looming for weeks. They're going back to their countries. They go back home. But now plans are reportedly underway for nationwide immigration raids. As reported by the New York Times, the roundups would target undocumented people on deportation lists. They'd reportedly begin Sunday in as many as 10 major American cities, about three weeks after President Trump warned this could happen. The result, near panic in some places. So this Sunday, do you plan to have the shades closed and extra food in the fridge? Yes, of course, because uh, um, I go yesterday um, on the market because uh, for prepare. Lillian, who asked that we not show her on camera, has been in the U.S. for 20 years. She has two children who are U.S. citizens, but she and her partner are undocumented. Are you afraid? Yes, I, I a lot of a lot of scary because uh, for this woman tells ABC News she's been in the country for decades and has two American daughters. She says her family is now sleeping with a heavy dresser in front of their door. It has to stop now. Immigration rights groups are now fanning out with cards that advise they are not legally bound to open doors to ICE. This morning, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham is defending the raids, saying it's simply enforcing the rule of law. To deport people who've gone through the process and lost their case, to me, is not cruel. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says families are being torn apart and asks the president to reconsider. As they prepare to go to church, they feel very threatened and scared by these raids. ICE officials are unwilling to confirm the Sunday raids, but they tell ABC News 2,000 people are on the agency's priority list and will be deported, quote, soon. So billionaire Jeffrey Epstein is facing new charges of sex trafficking, and he wants to stay out of jail while he awaits trial. His attorneys are proposing backing a bond for his release with a mortgage on his $77 million New York mansion. They're also offering his private jet as collateral as well as the home of his brother who lives in West Palm Beach. Under their proposal, Epstein would wear an ankle monitor and be confined to his New York home. Philadelphia police are searching for a suspect accused of attempting to rob a store because he said he needed to fund his daughter's kidney transplant. He had the money in hand, but then changed his mind, saying the crime wouldn't help his daughter's kidney operation. Police say they may know who that would-be robber is, and they also may be able to offer assistance to his family. Well, watch this high seas takedown of suspected drug smugglers by the U.S. Coast Guard. The smugglers in a submarine were spotted hundreds of miles off the Colombian coast. You can see the Coast Guard boat there in pursuit until it's close enough for a crew member to board the sub. He pounded on the hatch, demanding they surrender more than 17,000 pounds of cocaine with a street value of $232 million was seized. Five suspects were also taken into custody. At least 37 people were injured when an Air Canada flight headed to Australia hit severe turbulence. The flight was forced to make an emergency landing at an airport in Honolulu. There were five doctors on the plane who started treating those who were injured. At least nine people suffered serious injuries. The passenger described that terrifying ordeal. It was like a, a scene from a movie, like the worst possible scenario you can think of where you see a movie where a plane's about to crash, it was like that. It was just like people went whack straight up in the air and then from there masks came down, people were screaming, kids were crying. Everyone injured on board is expected to make full recoveries. One passenger says she will never ignore the seatbelt sign again on a plane.
A member of the U.S. women's soccer team says she was robbed at a luxury hotel in Los Angeles. Allie Long was attending the ESPYs with her husband and teammates when her room at the Ritz-Carlton was burglarized. She says in a tweet that someone stole her wedding ring and the key given to her by the mayor of New York. Police are reviewing video from the hotel. Serena Williams just took one giant step closer to 24. She, her quick defeat of Czech Barbara Strakova is in straight sets now advances Williams to her 11th Wimbledon singles championship. The second most all time behind Martina Navratilova's 12 at 37 years old. At 37 years old, Williams will also be the oldest women's finalist in the open era. But a win on Saturday would be with Ty Williams with Margaret Court for the most career Grand Slam singles, titles of 24. It'll be Serena Williams facing off against Romanian Simona Halep Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. And a mystery this morning on the Vermont State House lawn. It seems someone, someone, you see those plants, planted dozens of pot plants among the flower beds. Mm. Investigators say they don't know who planted the marijuana. One thing police are sure of, those plants weren't part of any landscaping plans. Nah. The beds are maintained, as, as you can see, very well by Buildings and General Services. They, they really know how to run the flower bed. Uh, it's a, a, an impressive display every year, but I don't think they included this in their annual rollout. All of the plants, a total of 34, have been removed. Coming up, the latest on the search for an elusive alligator in a Chicago park. And the nickname given to the gator based on a local hip-hop star right. when we come back. Now to Sudan, where the nation's ruling military council says it's foiled an attempted military coup just as the council and a pro-democracy coalition are expected to sign a transition deal. So let's go across the pond now to Joe Simonetti in the London Bureau for more on this. Good morning, Joe. Hey, good morning, Kenneth. Yeah, um, this happened overnight. The, uh, the government went on t state TV to announce that this was another coup attempt, a third since April, uh, when long-term president Omar Bashir was ousted from power. That triggered all kinds of street protests and lots of violence there in Khartoum and across the country. So they're having problems clearly settling down. We haven't seen any protests yet. Hopefully we won't. There are some, some people that are quite skeptical about this, um, about this announcement that there was another coup attempt. Some people say it's not happening. They think it's another ploy by the government to kind of work out some sort of deal to get the government uh, to settle down and in place and in power like the military wants. So we're just gonna have to wait to see how, uh, how things sort of pan out there. But right now things seem to be quiet and calm in, in Sudan. And Joe, so here back on this side of the uh, pond, we've been celebrating the champions of the Women's World Cup all week, but I know you're paying attention to a different World Cup. Totally off topic, guys. We're going to move off Sudan and off coup attempts. And we're going to talk about something that I know absolutely nothing about, which is cricket, even though I've lived here for nearly 20 years. Uh, and I've tried to follow this. So, yes, uh, the Cricket World Cup is here on Sunday. England, a country that invented this sport back in the 18th century, has never won a World Cup. They've been in the, uh, in the finals three times. They are playing New Zealand on Sunday. Everyone here is, is hoping that they, they take the cup this time around. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but it's, it's an incredibly, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to watch any of this. To me, it's very, very complicated to understand. I've, I still told uh, Yeah, I actually can. have uh, seen some cricket matches here in the U.S., and it is a little complicated. Look at you. Uh, no, I'm very cultured. I, I was going to say all types of culture. Yeah, uh, but I found it very interesting. Um, also what? interesting, Joe, is so there's a we got a football player over here on our I side mean, of the pond. But guys, I, I mean, this video, when, when it was sent to me this morning, I had not seen it. I mean, it is it's incredible. I mean, I, there, I, I cannot. I mean, so watch this. Um, so it, this is the Redskins cornerback, um, Josh Norman, uh, showing people in Pamplona how to, to not run with the bulls, but jump over them. I mean, not just once, not twice, three times. It's amazing to watch the reaction in the crowd. I mean, he, this is just the coolest thing I've seen all morning. A very cool. Glad he's okay. Wondering how his coaches feel about it, but... I mean... <laughs> Takes it off well, I mean, the bull, the bull looked a bit sluggish, I thought. I mean, the bull, I mean, although, I'm, I mean, I, this is not for me to say because I certainly would have been knocked down in about two seconds but, yeah. um, and wouldn't have the courage to do it. But uh, it is pretty cool to see. Pretty and cool to watch. Safe. Well, Joe, thank you for and joining us safe. this morning. Have a right, fabulous guys. weekend. Thanks, Joe. Guys, you two have a nice weekend. Thank you. And let's, let's check our notifications. Let's do it. Let's do it. Starting with a bear. Who just needed a vacation? The bear necessities. That's mm -hmm. what he needed. This furry guest showed up at a mountain resort in New Hampshire. Workers saw the bear hanging out watching the sunrise late last month. That was after it lumbered around looking in trash cans for food. Oh. Mm -hmm. And a gator missing in a Chicago park apparently doesn't want to be found. Five foot reptile.
Mm -hmm. That's how big it is. Was spotted first on Tuesday and then was last seen Wednesday. That reptile with this amazing nickname, Chance the Snapper. Oh, I get it. Paying homage to Chance the Rapper, mm -hmm. Chicago native. Yep. Has drawn crowds to the Humble Park Lagoon, but it hasn't bitten on any of the traps set up in the area. Officials have put restrictions on park usage until Chance the Snapper's caught. Okay, well, mark September 20th on your calendars. That's when more than 300,000 people have said they are going to storm Area 51 Whoa. in Nevada to see them aliens. Yeah. A Facebook event has gone viral saying they can't stop all of us. Uh, that's a good point, and that brings us to the question of the day. Area 51, you know, that remote military Top base. Top secret. Yeah, out in Nevada. Do you think they're hiding secrets there? If and so, what do you think they're hiding? Do you think they're hiding, hiding UFOs, aliens? Anything like that. Jimmy Hoffa. Do you really, truly believe? Yeah. Um, X-File style. Let us know. Um, Tell us and just comments. a reminder for those who are trying to storm Area 51, there are men with guns there. Men We're and, authorized. Men and women. To use deadly I, force. I, I don't, actually, I don't know what gender is there. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's top secret. <laughs> it could be yeah, men. Right. It could just be women, an army of women with guns. I Somebody don't know. is authorized to do what they got to do to keep you out. That's so, true. Good luck. Um, and one baseball league has gone high tech behind home plate. This week, the Atlantic League used a computer system to call balls and strikes in its all star game. It's called TrackMan, and it uses Doppler radar to determine whether a pitch is a ball or strike. It's connected to an iPhone on a human ump behind the plate. They hear either ball, strike, or <laughs> did not track in their ear. It says ball. And then, because it's using Doppler, it will tell you the weather forecast. No. Sounds like win for everybody. <laughs> uh, except those umpires. Yep. Coming up, the two cancer survivors on the bicycle trip of a lifetime. They're going from Vancouver to Florida, but they stopped halfway to chat to us. Mm -hmm. More after this. Here's what to watch out for. Tropical storm Barry is expected to make landfall late tonight or early tomorrow, possibly as a hurricane threatening the Louisiana coast with flash flooding and potentially deadly storm surge. Stay with ABC News Live for the latest. And President Trump hits the road today, hoping to garner support for a trade deal with Mexico and Canada. The White House says the president will visit an aerospace company that provides parts, logistics and repair services to fixed wing aircraft. He also plans to attend a couple of fundraisers, first in Milwaukee, then another is set for Cleveland. Democrats running for president are busy as former Vice President Joe Biden, Beto O'Rourke, and Mayor Pete Buttigieg campaign in the early primary state of New Hampshire. And Senator Kamala Harris will appear on The View. And activists are set to hold vigils outside of detention centers and hundreds of other locations nationwide, followed by protest Saturday over the detention and treatment of migrants at the border. Plus, don't forget to tune into The Debrief for an update on all our top stories and The Briefing Room for a breakdown of the latest headlines in politics. Well, absolutely nothing is stopping two amazing cancer survivors on an extraordinary mission. They're bicycling 4,000 miles across North America. They're just over halfway to their goal, and they took a little quick breather to talk to our own Will Gans. Imagine doing the Tour de France, then throw in an extra thousand miles and add 500 more for good measure. That's exactly what Annie Lipsitz and Bob Falkenberg are doing. But for these two, the journey is personal. Our, our whole purpose is to do two things. One is to provide some money to be the match, provide hope to other patients that are going through the same process that we went through and that there is life after transplant. Bob and Annie both received life-saving bone marrow stem cell transplants. Bob in 2009 and Annie a year later. Bob has been biking to raise funds for cancer research for a while now. Annie wanting to join since she was in recovery. Until now, joining Bob on this cross-country trip, his longest ride yet. It's great to, to have another transplant survivor along. Annie and I are good friends and um, you know, it's just, uh, it's been a pleasure. Their starting line all the way back in Vancouver, Canada. This morning, these cancer survivors and thrivers are in North Manchester, Indiana, about 1,500 miles away from their finish line in Florida. And the ride hasn't been totally easy. For me, getting used to the day-to-day -day pace of the ride, so riding 70, 80, 90, sometimes 100 miles day after day after day. Passing through mountains in the rain and the cold. This is a 16-mile climb up a mountain and then down a mountain where it was still cold and raining. Neither of us could feel our fingers. But for this determined duo, it's all worth it. Their 3,500-mile journey all in efforts to raise funds and awareness for Be The Match 
Foundation delivering cures for blood cancers and their message to those who are in the shoes they were in just 10 years ago. The thing that you're working towards doesn't have to be riding your bike 4,000 miles across the country. It can be going back to work or taking your kids to school or walking around the block or just, it doesn't have to be this grand physical activity. It can be whatever that goal is for you that makes you feel happy, healthy, and whole. Bob and Annie are looking forward to making a stop at Emory University Hospital in Atlanta where they both got their treatment to visit with doctors and nurses. They will celebrate be the match and to register or donate that's just be the match.org so important to think about donating mm -hmm. i know um annie had a tough time she only was a match for one person in the yep. whole registry um especially people of color it's a hard time to find a mm -hmm. match so important to be a donor and they are yeah. raising a lot of awareness with that bike ride incredible as well. work they're doing all right that's it from us today on this friday if you're in the gulf coast stay safe and for everybody across this great nation have a good one Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.